it's, it's at the point now that, that people are, many people are going back into the replacement theology again to where Israel is, is, is a non-issue. It, does, is, it has no relevance, no importance whatsoever. These things are what led, led to the Holocaust. The people accepting this. You know, you know that at the Nuremberg trials, one of the Nazis got up to defend himself and he quotes Martin Luther's writings to defend himself. When the replacement theology comes in, which is completely an antithesis to the Word of God, it makes people desensitize and actually causes them to be against Israel instead of for Israel. We've lost the identification. That's why I'm saying we've got to stop this Greek approach, stop this Greek thinking, and go back to what it means to be a Hebraic thinking. What does it mean to have a, follow a Jewish Messiah? How is it possible to look up to David, to look up to Noah, to look up to Abraham, to look up to all these people who, do not, who did not share our faith? They weren't Christians. We chase after Samson and, and Gideon and all these wonderful people who did not share our faith. How, and what were they? they were all Jews. How is it possible for the church to run after following the Jews yet have no Jewish DNA? It's not possible. It is not possible. God bless you, sir. You got a lot of emails here and texts coming through. This one says, praise God, at last the truth is being told. <laughs> In 1986, the Holy Spirit revealed these truths to me, to the Jew first, yes. Phil from Swansea. Amen. Wow. Uh, it's like, you know, you, you, <laughs> you're doing something special tonight. This one says, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you so much for this, program, for this program. We so need to hear this. And yes, I have the complete Jewish Bible. I thoroughly recommend it. Mm. God bless you. Mm. And Genesis, we bless you both on Genesis TV. Great show. Thanks, Scott, for sharing about the truth about our Jewish roots. The Complete Jewish Bible by David Stern is great. <laughs> Blessings. Irene. Wow. A lot of... It. Now, just in a, quickly, yeah. because, you know, this question always comes, even though we've spoken about it before, we've had scholars talk about it before. Just quickly, tithing. Yeah. Some would say it's not New Testament stuff. Yeah. So what, what's your take on that? Well... Uh, it is in the New Testament, uh, in particular in Hebrews chapter 7, uh, where it actually says that Jesus receives our tithes. Um, but beyond that, uh, they, they usually, when they say that, they say it's a law thing. But there again, I want to emphasize this. Tithing existed before the law. Uh, and because it existed before the law, it makes it a law unto itself. Just like Sabbath existed, just like Passover existed. All these things existed before there was a law. So it's not possible to say, well, it was just a law, so forget about it. But tithing has always been. It's always existed from the very, from the very, very beginning. In, in, in the garden, even, God instituted the giving and offering unto him, and it's maintained all the way through. So therefore, it existed before the law, and people, some people would say after the law, although uh, I have my own opinions as to, as to the functioning of the law. I think there is uh, a lot of things that are still in play today, which is a whole other topic and, and a whole other show. <laughs> Dear Pastor Yemi, thank the Lord for this minister and his ministry. How refreshing to hear the true gospel being preached over the airwaves. This proves that the coming of, of Jesus is very near. Amen. God bless you, Marjorie. Amen. Hi, Scott. Brilliant. Please, will you explain about the Passover? What day did it take place and was it the actual Passover meal that Jesus celebrated? How do the timings work in with Jesus being the Passover lamb. Mm. Many thanks, Mike. Right. Um, very good question, Mike. Um, uh, it, the, um, the 14th of Nisan is the actual day of Passover. Um, uh, but you knew, you're right. G it seems like Jesus celebrated the, the Passover the day before, uh, before the day. And, uh, and in actuality, he did. He was crucified on the day of Passover, uh, or actually the day of preparation as it was leading up to it. Um, they worked their days differently there. The day begins. Uh, uh, one minute after midnight, uh, as opposed to, I'm sorry, the, the day begins at, at 6 o'clock as opposed to beginning uh, at, uh, at midnight. But on top of that, uh, something that's very telling is um, Jesus said to go and uh, make ready the, the Passover. And he said, go into this certain area of the city, and he said, you'll see a man carrying a pitcher. And that right there, Mike, is the thing that solves the whole thing. The city of Jerusalem is divided up into many different quarters, and one quarter is called the Essene Quarter. And only men lived in that area. They didn't have the women. Women always carried the water. For him to say, go find a man carrying a pitcher of water, that meant going to the Essene Quarter. And the Essenes had this idea that the temple had been corrupted because a lot of the, the priests were political appointees, 
And so they did things a little bit different, a little bit different calendar, and they celebrated the Passover slightly different timing than what the Jewish people did. So Jesus was able to celebrate the Passover in the Essene quarter because everybody there was doing it and also be able to sacrifice himself as a Paschal lamb on the actual day of uh, Passover. Wow. You've got, you got fans. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Hi, brothers. This is, um, this is amazing. This program has well and truly answered my heartfelt prayer. Oh, praise the Lord. I live in a small village in Stirlingshire and was yearning for a fellowship like this near to me. Praise Yahweh. I will be attending this church soon. Uh, willing. Yahweh willing. Please, could you explain the scripture in Matthew 23, 7 to 12? Thank you. Um, well, we've, we're running out of time, really, but I just quickly skimmed through. That's 23, 7 to 12 says, Greetings in the marketplaces and to be called by men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But you do not, but you do. But you do not be called Rabbi, for one is your teacher, the mm. Christ, and you are all brethren. Do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. And do not be called teachers, for one is your teacher, the Christ. Mm. But he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Mm. And uh, finally, verse 12, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. As exalted. Yeah. Um, it has to do with the actual usage of the word, because obviously um, we, the Bible t talks about your honor, your mothers, your fathers, and so forth. It uses the word father very, very commonly, very frequently. Jesus was called rabbi on many occasions and so forth. So the actual use of those words, if you look in the original text, it has the connotation of an exalted place of being a lord and master over. Uh, rabbi, only, rabbi in English just means teacher. Uh, there was nothing wrong with the term. But he said the word he used there was not just a regular rabbi. It was a rabbi term they used for an exalted, almost Lord over type uh, position. Okay. So, uh, and all those were used in that same context. God bless sure. you. And um, you know what? If you want to get in touch with this church in Sterling, you can actually call the office tomorrow and speak to Susie. And she will be, she will give you the, num the telephone number and the email address and all the other bits. But just quickly, mm. can you tell us what the email address is? Yeah, the email address, you can... Uh, you can email at office. Oh, you have a website? I do. The website is, is www.churchatsterling. That's all spelled out, churchatsterling.co.uk. Okay. And on that site, you can also link to Bridges for Peace uh, and uh, hook up with Bridges for Peace through there. I have articles. I have CD series you can get. I've got uh, stuff you can listen to. Hopefully, it's a one-stop shop for everybody. Okay. And if any, if any pastors are looking for, if they would like to have me come and uh, help them out with their breaks, I'm happy. I make myself available to them to, uh, to do that. God bless you, sir. This one says, I pray that the deaf ear will hear and eyes be open to the message tonight. Amen. Time the church hears the truth. Blessings from Donald. And this one says, Shalom, great program. Is there a fellowship church like yours in the Cheltenham or uh, Seren, Seren, sister area? Love, love the Jewish people. Jennifer. Amen. Wow. Sorry, Jennifer, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, can you just, uh, what about the Bridges for Peace? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, we, we right, really right. Bridges for Peace. Yes. What do you do in Israel? Just in two sentences. They are a humanitarian organization that minister practically to the needs of the Jewish people, making a huge difference. Thank you so much, sir. And God bless you, God bless you, bless you. Bless you. It's been great having you here. Thank you Thanks very much. It's been great to be here. Well, thank you for watching tonight, and we'll be back with you tomorrow. God bless you, and have a good night.